All right, so Jared McCann traded to the Toronto Maple Leafs in exchange for Philip Hollander and a seventh. Hollander came over to the Leafs from the Pens in the Kapanen trade. So it was Kapanen to the Pens, obviously, and the Leafs got uh, the first round pick that ended up being uh, Rodion Amiroff that they drafted, and then Hollander as well. So they just sent Hollander back to Pittsburgh, get Jared McCann, and they also include a seventh round pick. Uh, so McCann uh, from Stratford, he played for the Sioux, so there's that connection with uh, Kyle Dubis. He's 25 years old, so still fairly young. And this is the big thing for me. Only a $2.94 million cap hit. He can play left wing. He can play center. We know with the Leafs potentially losing Hyman, McCann could be the left winger for Matthews. Potentially could be the left winger for Tavares. Or if they were to trade Kerfoot after the expansion draft now because the roster freeze is in effect, they can trade Kerfoot, get assets back, and McCann is a cheaper option than Kerfoot. Kerfoot's at $3.5 million and McCann uh, under three. So... I like it a lot. I think this is a W for Toronto. I also, I mean, I, I think it's fine for Pittsburgh because in their mindset, they were going to lose McCann for nothing. And I was saying, okay, if you're Pittsburgh, at least get something. So they get Hollander, who I think Hollander going forward can still be like a middle six uh, player. Like I think he he shows a little bit of like, I know there was some comparison to Patty Hornquist. I don't know if he's that comparable, but I think in this scenario of uh, uh, being kind of like a two-way forward good defensively reliable player. That's Hollander, middle six guy. But uh, so he played in the Sioux in the OHL uh, in 43 games this past year with Pittsburgh. He had 32 points. Those are some good numbers. He only had the, the disappointing thing, and I was actually going to talk about in the stream, but McCann only had one point in six games in the playoffs in their series with the Islanders and getting eliminated. What's the least biggest problem right now? Players going invisible in the playoffs and in... Uh, 12 career playoff games. Jared McCann only has three points. So a little, little concerning on that side. Maybe McCann <laughs> flips that a little bit in Toronto. But yes, it seems like he goes a little bit invisible in the playoffs, which is cause for concern. But he is a guy that if we pull up here, he is reliable on the defensive side. It seems like uh, the analytics show that uh, even strength defense, 92%. Big shout out to Jay Fresh. So um Decently offensively, obviously that would uh, be more of an effective offensive transition for him if he is playing with a guy like Matthews or playing with a guy like Tavares, playing with Marner and Elander. So McCann could be a guy that plays in the left wing in that top six, but also could be a guy, as I said, that plays as the third line center. He, he can go both ways. Um, yeah, so Friedman said the return. So my overall sense of this is, I think this is a W from Dubis. I'm still looking for maybe returns on other guys. So after the expansion draft, it seems like there's some sense right now that the Leafs have some kind of deal or some kind of understanding with Seattle that they're going to select a certain player. I would imagine at this point now, the Leafs are going to protect seven forwards. That being Matthews, Nylander, Marner, Tavares, uh, obviously McCann now, Kerfoot, and then you can go wherever with that, like Angball or whatever, right? That means you're exposing both Justin Hall and Travis Dermott. I don't know if there's an understanding or some kind of deal Behind the scenes, that's what happened with Vegas. We don't know about it, but I'm, I'm imagining there's some kind of understanding with Seattle here with Toronto. And I would imagine they take Hall or Dermot, as I said. Uh, it could be Dermot, and that's why maybe they were comfortable with selecting or getting McCann here in the trade because I think they want to keep Hall. Um, but at the same time, Hall did not play well in the playoffs. And if you guys know me, you saw the streams, I was getting pissed off at Justin Hall. So that's where I go, okay. I think they could get a return for Justin Hall. Dermot's one of those, like, Dermot's very comparable. I would, I would, I like Vince Dunn more, but, like, kind of the Vince Dunn. Dunn did not get traded before this roster freeze, uh, like, this deadline, right? Because I think St. Louis is just accepting that Vince Dunn is going to get selected by Seattle in the same way that Dermot might get selected by Seattle here. So that's where I'm trying to make sense of this trade in terms of the expansion draft perspective because I think Dubis now is understanding that, okay, maybe if we expose Hall, they're taking Dermot anyways. I don't know the understanding. I don't know what's happening behind the scenes, but that's what I'm trying to make sense of it. So I think it's a big W by Toronto regardless. I'm down to protect Kerfoot. I am so down to protect Kerfoot and trade him after for pieces because I do believe Kerfoot could be very valuable. He showed what he could do in the playoffs. He showed what he can do last year. He actually had a good year, good playoffs. Kerfoot could be good value to trade. And I think the Leafs should do it because uh, you're going to try to sign another guy. And I think the Leafs now have the comfortability of having a guy like McCann who can play, as I said, the third line center role or on the wing. So hit that subscribe button, drop a like. I think this is fine for Pittsburgh, as I said. I don't think this is a big dub for them, but you got a piece back for a guy that you should be protecting, in my opinion, but they weren't going to protect him, so you get something for him. And the Leafs, big dub. Dubis hopefully making up for his mistakes.